Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the course, How to Use Zebra HD. This is video 19, and today we're talking about the XMF module. So this is another filter module, and it's a little bit more CPU intensive than the VCF that we already covered, but it's very cool. It's a cross-modulation filter, input-dependent distortion, audio rate FM. You have 15 different types of filters and two filter types that can be routed in series, parallel, or difference. And here's the cool part. It has splittable stereo cutoffs with modulation. So that's kind of a lot, I know. Let's uh, kind of dive into it and see what this thing could do. So let's init preset here. Underneath this first oscillator, let's select an empty cell and go down to XMF1. So the first thing that we need to know about this thing is our cutoff is at the far left side here, our resonance here in the middle, and then the key following is gonna be right above that. So basically this XMF, you have two stereo filters, right? So we have this first one here and then the second one over here. Now, when we click this first one here, we get a drop down menu of different types of filters, right? We have low passes, band passes, band rejects, then we have kind of combinations here, all pass filters, so on and so forth. So you can kind of pick whatever you want for the first position here. And then for the second one, you can also pick something else, right? So you can have a low pass going into a band reject or something like that. Kind of depends on what you really want to do. And you'll notice that on the second one here, this by default says same. And all that's basically telling us is that it's basically going to adopt the settings from the first filter. Now, if we don't want that, we can always select something else. So that's kind of the main concept, right? So before we get into the different routings and the driver here, I do want to show you how cool this offset thing is. So we have a saw wave and we're sending it through this filter here. Now, if we give us some resonance, Let's maybe use a different low pass, maybe low pass tuple. Okay, so we have something like that, maybe some more resonance. Okay, so that's kind of an annoying amount of resonance here. And here's the cool part. Once we turn this offset here, we're basically offsetting the cutoff points, right? So we're kind of having two cutoffs now, and we can see that here. So once we move our cutoff, if you look right in here, you can kind of see these two little points here. So we're going to increase the resonance kind of annoyingly, so bear with me. Kind of something like this right here. And you can see here, we're gonna have two different cutoffs with resonance, which is really cool. And like I said, it has modulation. So if we double click this here, and maybe we send this to something like the first LFO, and then we can set this maybe to one second and give it a little bit of modulation and see what it does. Yeah, very, very cool. So kind of start get your, your brain thinking what you can kind of do with this kind of thing here. It's really, really, really fun to play with. So let's go and remove this here, go back to none. So let's kind of talk a little bit about this routing, right? So we select this here, we have single, uh, we have single, serial, parallel, and difference, right? So single, what it comes on by default. So this is basically the two filters with stereo splittable cutoffs, what we just looked at right here. And then we have serial, which is kind of interesting. So filter one's output is sent directly into filter two's input. And then moving on from here, we have parallel. So if you don't know, basically the signal is sent into both filters independently. So two different paths. And then down over here on the last one, we have diffed or basically the difference, right? So the, it's the difference of the signal. So filter one signal is gonna be subtracted from the filter number two which is kind of interesting. So if you're playing something like this and you have it on diff and it's on same, you might not hear anything because it's subtracting exactly what it is there. So you're not gonna hear anything. So if we change this to something like low pass four, then we're gonna to start to hear something. But if we go back to same, it's gonna be subtracting everything that's there. And there's a lot of combinations with this, with this module here. So it's a lot of fun to play around with. Okay, moving on from here, we have a thing called driver here. So we have XMF, analog, biased, or yeah, biased, eco, and folded. So I found that the definitions in the manual are probably the best ones here. So the XMF is standard, high quality, plenty of bite, as they say. The analog is gonna be classic ladder filter. Overload is gonna be warm and dark. Biased is gonna be diode-like asymmetrical distortion for more even numbered harmonics. The Eco is a CPU-friendly version of analog, lower quality overload. And then we have folded is gonna be positive peaks that would otherwise clip are folded back down. So generally kind of play around with these because you're gonna get a little bit different tonality here. So let's go to same and let's go maybe to single or something like that. And maybe get some modulation here. So let's go to 
Actually, we could just use the first LFO, that's fine. Maybe a little less resonance here. Give us some overload here. So even there, there's a massive difference between the XMF driver here and then the analog as well. So definitely spend some time with it. It's actually really, really, uh, really cool. So basically, let's kind of recap some of these knobs here. So like we've seen before, we have the cutoff, and then we have the different modulation controls for the cutoff, kind of like how we do for other things as well. And then we have our resonance down over here, our key following right above that, basically, which moves the cutoff with the notes that we play. If we put it to 100%, it's going to move in perfect semitones. So a quick little demonstration of that. Let's remove our LFO here. So if we have no key following, maybe a lower cutoff here. We can play all these notes, but the cutoff is gonna, gonna be the same if we put it all the way to 100. Maybe lower cutoff here. We can see that our filter is moving as our notes are ascending and descending. So yeah, key, uh, key following, key tracking, pretty much the same thing there. We went over the offset here, and now here's gonna be some of the cool part here. So basically we can use filter or frequency modulation on our filter, which is get some really weird sounds and really weird textures and all that so basically by default this is going to use its input signal to move this cutoff here so let's put all the stuff back to default here by double clicking let's remove this lfo What's gonna be kind of cool let's say we need we have we want something else to frequency modulate this knob here we can have an alternate input so we can right click a cell and then select the side chain for the input so let's go to oscillator actually we can use an fmo for this this might be kind of a good example for that so we have fmo on number two let's mute this for now and right click this xmf and put side chain two so it's getting this input here Now keep in mind, this is very, very fast, right? This waveform is moving really, really quick. So if we want to change the speed of it, we're going to have to change it in the oscillator. So if we went down to the FMO here and then maybe drop the tuning down pretty substantially, something like that, then we're going to start to really hear that frequency modulation. And the cool part of something like this too, using an external input, you can really change the waveform how you want to. And keep in mind, as you play different notes, if it's getting sidechained from a different oscillator or something like that, it's going to move faster if you play different notes because those notes are higher pitched and that higher pitch is moving at a faster rate, which then in turn moves the cutoff at a faster rate depending on the notes you play. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. It's a very cool module. Highly recommend to play around with it here. And the filters sound pretty cool. So yeah, spend some time with it. Oh, the last thing we need to talk about before we leave is gonna be a little bit of this overdrive and the click here. So what we could do, let's disable this FMO for now. Now we have click here, right? So this is gonna introduce a click. So if we want something maybe percussive or we want something kind of a little with a little bit of attack to it, we can do something like that, which is kind of nice to have in a filter, right? If you want a little bit more pluckiness to it or something like that. And then we have basically our overload here and it's going to sound different with different drivers and it's going to sound different with different filters. So definitely spend some time with the overload and the click's kind of cool. So yeah, spend some time with it. And these two are modulatable. Same with the FM2. So you can modulate basically you can modulate frequency modulation on the filter cutoff from a side chained oscillator. It gets deep after a while. Hopefully that makes somewhat of sense. But uh, yeah, so hopefully you learned something. Thank you so much for watching and we're going to see you in the next video.